Hi, I'm Rachel and welcome to my little video. I'm going to share with you how I go from taking a sketch to creating a wax piece ready for the lost wax technique. This is my studio, which I share with my little dog, Max. He likes coming to work with me every day. But back to the wax. I use a extruded type of wax and it comes in two thicknesses, a 6mm and a 3mm. The 6mm is really good to use to lay out your guidelines for a shape and that's what I'm doing here. I've chosen a polystyrene former because it's lightweight um, and easy for me to work the wax onto. You don't want a former that's too heavy because then once you've packed it and put it in a, a box ready to uh, drive down to the foundry, you don't want any of your wax being crushed by the weight of its former. So polystyrene is a perfect material to use. So we're going to speed up a little because um, it takes me, you know, quite a few days to create these waxes. So what you can see is a series of guidelines being laid out by the thick 6mm wax and I use a special cord to fasten parts together. I'm using a really sticky um, linen thread that's coated with wax and that ensures that it burns out cleanly when we get to the lost wax part of the casting. So all the formers are being created ready for the next stage. The next part of the sculpture is infilling all of those guidelines and I like to use the crochet chain stitch method. I use the finer 3mm wax for this. It comes in a little coil and it sometimes can be a little tricky to get started because it kind of remembers the shape that it was in in the coil. So just a little bit of manipulation with your hands to warm it up, a little bit of smoothing and it soon starts to work very well. It's surprising how much chain stitch you need for such a small sculpture. Um, you end up needing sort of lengths and lengths of it and uh, generally it takes around four times the length of wax to create a smaller piece of uh, chain stitch. And we're gonna go fast again uh, in a moment just so that it speeds up the endless hours that I spend creating chain stitches in wax. I try not to go for too long a piece because then once you get to the next stage of applying it to the former it can be a bit tricky not to break them whilst you're trying to manipulate them and hold them and place them in uh, along the former. So I've got my collections of chain stitch and I'm going to return the former back and what I'm going to be doing is infilling all of those empty spaces around that former and tying the chain stitch onto the guidelines that I've laid down. The wax linen thread is not removed at all and when you see the finished sculpture, if you look really closely, you'll see lots of tiny little knots and the great thing about using the wax linen is that it will burn out cleanly in the investment process but then it will actually be transformed into bronze uh, along with the wax. So you, uh, whatever you do with the wax linen thread will be there in the finished bronze sculpture. So I try and keep my knots nice and tidy and trim off any loose threads. I just begin by laying the crochet chain stitch of wax onto the surface and start with a larger area to start with and if possible to fasten it in a couple of places to hold the guidelines in place. Most of the time once I'm building up a thicker layer you don't actually see many of the guidelines because they become covered in layers and layers of, of crochet chain stitch but they are really useful for fastening all these pieces I, uh, in place uh, for, for the structure of the piece but also for guiding the foundry. Um, so the maple seed is made in two halves and it's it's really good for the foundry to be able to see a clear area of where they can join those pieces so I leave one of the guidelines around the edges clear of any weaving so we get a really nice seam 
when we bring those two pieces together. So this is the outer part of the sycamore leaf that I've already made. Um, I've made all of this in a 6mm wax, but for the outer part of the leaf to give it a little bit more structure, I've used two lengths. And so the job that I'm about to start with my little wax welder is to infill all of the outer parts to take those two strands of 6mm wax and transform them into a 12mm thickness piece of wax. I'm also uh, connecting any joints, so any of the inner filigree work that I've laid down for the decorative part of the leaf also needs filling with wax. It's a really nice process and it's one of my favourite jobs is wax welding. There's just something um, sort of quite meditative about it. So you put your little welder on, your music in the background and you've got your little sticks of wax and you just methodically working around the surface of the wax infilling all of those little areas and um, you can see I've got a, a tub full of little pieces so as I'm working with the wax and I'm stitching and uh, creating chain stitches the pieces break off all the time but the great thing about using wax is that there's no waste because all of the little bits that break off they just get dropped in the tub and they're perfect for use for wax welding. If I get lots of little tiny pieces that are a bit too short then I put them in a, in a little wax melting pot and I can create a large solid from all the tiny pieces and then cut that into sticks so every single part of the wax gets used. Thank you for watching and I hope you've enjoyed seeing how I create my waxes ready for the lost wax casting technique.